Okay, I think we're live. Arvind, do you want to confirm that we're live before I start then? I'm just going to get the chat open. There, I typed into the chat there. Hello, okay. We're live then. Okay, welcome to the mini paint challenge this week. It's okay, you can hear me okay, perfect. So welcome to the mini paint challenge. This is officially the first week of the challenge and we did a test stream. I'm hoping the audio sounds better. <laughs> the dishwasher is clunking. So I had to pull on my story, forgot to run the dishwasher last night. So I ran it this morning hoping that it would, uh, it would be better and uh, finish by then, but no, um, it's not. So maybe I'll just, I'll pause it for now. One second. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, I can like okay, is that is that better? Do we okay. I'll have to finish the dishwasher later. But welcome to the mini paint challenge. Today we have some Christmassy vibes. I guess you can't see the cat tree quite yet. I tried to keep the camera here so I can mix some paint, but we've got a really fun, exciting painting to do today. Uh, we're gonna try to do some like Christmassy themed things for December. But yeah, we're I'm just gonna walk you through what I do when I'm painting and I'm just gonna I'm gonna have fun painting. So I guess we can get started. Um over on this on the side here, this side, um these are kind of like the how to join the challenge. So you can join in by like tagging me on social media just use the hashtag mini paint challenge and then tag me at megan jossel art and then yeah you can post your own stuff and i'll go show your your art some love so here we go we've got my palette here we're just gonna we're gonna go right into it so i decided to change the reference photo a little bit <laughs> yes it is free you don't have to pay to uh do my little paint lessons on here. I'm gonna pick out the colors that I want to use. Uh, so I I had this originally, like the reference photo was like a slightly different blue, but I wanted a bright blue like this. So I'm gonna use some of the cerulean blue and I think the ultramarine will be really nice. And I don't like using black and there is kind of some like black areas in it. I actually like using a bit of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson mixed together. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a really dark purple and that's gonna be the darker areas. So I, I put put a little bit of a an arrow here that I can move around. And so yeah, these like darker areas around here are what I'm talking about. We can make that more of like a purpley blue color. And then we've got some highlights. I'm almost thinking might want to try to put some silver in it. I just have metallic paint and it's fun to play with. So I figured some metallic paint would be nice. And we will grab some titanium white as our base. I'm going to try to keep the colors pretty simple. I also like to use this solvent free gel from Gamblin and then it's not as toxic. It's pretty much just oil, but it's in like a gel form. So it keeps your paints nice and thick. And then what else do we want to do here? I feel like we could probably even use some phthalo turquoise. I really like using this and you can kind of see there's kind of like greeny tints in like the yellow, yellowy white areas, like the highlights. So I think we can kind of mix the titanium white and phthalo turquoise together. Okay, so we will set out these paints and get ourselves started. If I can uh, get all, metallic should give it a shimmer right. Yeah, exactly. So it has like little little metal flakes in it. It's not actually silver. It's just like little metal flakes that 
make it like shiny afterwards. I find it looks so cool on, I, I used it for the last painting I did actually. I used the gold one. So I have a, what was it? I have a, a rich gold, a copper and a silver. And these ones, I use all Gamblin paints just to keep it simple. I like that they are use they use linseed oil which dries a little bit faster than some of the other oils like walnut oil. And I don't I don't like to use any sort of solvents in my painting. So I kind of have to pick more things that will dry decently quick but not not using solvents. Solvents just dry a lot faster. I'll put, that's the alizarin crimson that I put on there. And have all my little paints organized over here. So I'm trying to put them back where they're supposed to be. And then I will put some ultramarine blue on next. Now I'm doing like a really tiny painting. It is a mini paint challenge. So, but you're welcome to do it bigger if you want as well. It just might take longer. I think it's kind of nice to do the mini ones though because it's like a bit of a challenge, right? To see how small you can get something. And then we'll do the phalo turquoise next. Oh, such pretty blues on this palette. These are cerulean blue is one of my favorite blues to use. You'll see, you'll see a lot of that blue in my paintings because I just really love the color. Yes, it's a three inch by three inch paper. I don't know why I chose that size. I guess it was just I had, I think it was like twelve by twelve papers at the time. So I was like, well, I'll do that. Um, we might have to get Arvin to come down later and try to open the silver up for us. <laughs> but I, I don't want to open it now anyway, because I find that the metallic paints dry really quickly. So you just want to open it right when you're about to use it or else like they dry within 30 minutes or at least the first layer does. I don't know why they just dry really quickly. Must be something with the metal that they use and they're like reacts with it. Okay, we will start with those ones. I like to start with the darkest colors first. So I'm gonna go in with the um, ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson, just to make that deep purple color. And we wanna side on more blue, just because the bow is blue. We don't wanna be mixing too much purple into it. Though it wouldn't be that bad if uh, the bow turned out a little bit purpley anyway. Don't mind. That's the nice thing about painting is you can kind of just do whatever you want. There's no rules when it comes to painting and things don't need to be perfect per se. Especially when you're doing like realistic things, the less kind of perfect it looks, the more realistic it looks. You don't want everything to be super uniform all the time. Because life is, there. there's a lot of uh, mistakes in life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting at over here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. I like to just kind of take it on my palette knife and then I'm just kind of holding it up to the photo to see. I think those are nice, okay. I'm gonna put it over on the side. I like to make cute little piles on the side. And I'm just gonna, I think when you don't make it hyper-realistic, you let the brain figure out what it sees. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You kind of just, you just go with it. You have fun with it. I feel like it's more fun to be like less meticulous with things and just kind of let them flow. Now the next color, we're just going to kind of try to use like 
this color here and add a little bit of the cerulean blue. The cerulean blue goes a long way, so don't use too much like I just did. <laughs> it really brightens things up. Oh, look at that. It looks so pretty. It makes a really nice like sky color if you mix the two together as well. Yeah, that looks nice. So just a little bit of the cerulean and uh, the ultramarine blue. We'll put that down. And now we're slowly, like with the bow, we're just going to slowly move down to the next color. We want a really saturated one before we lighten it with any titanium white because when you add titanium white it kind of like it, it tones down the colors quite a bit and kind of makes them look almost I wouldn't say like chalky but like it just it just it, it makes them like not look as nice if you add too much white right away so you kind of want to start with the more saturated colors and then slowly add the white because as soon as you start adding white into an oil painting it's like it's hard it's hard to go back <laughs> so you always want to start out with like your darkest values first if you can and that's why i like starting to mix with that um so i'm going to add in just a little bit of white to start out. You pick up a little bit more cerulean blue. It's such a pretty blue. There we go. Got a little bit more white in there. not quite there. I actually think I want to add a little bit of the ultramarine in there too. The cerulean tends to be pretty uh, pretty saturated so if I add the ultramarine it'll kind of Are you going to move the reference photo arrow around? Actually, yeah, I should. Our, see, my husband, he uh, he gave me the idea of putting this like little arrow. So I'm kind of doing these like transition colors there. There, I moved the arrow for you. So I'm doing the little transitions in. I got I got to get used to using the the little arrow because it's a great idea. It's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing if I move the arrow onto the next color instead of just trying to like explain where I'm doing it. So thanks, son. <laughs> okay, we've got this next color. Mm. Mm. I think I might add a little bit more white to it. You do want to make a decent amount of transition colors when it comes to oil painting because mixing with your brushes is a big no-no. I mean, if you want your brushes to last a long time anyway, because the biggest thing here, I'll show you. So the brush, I'll give you a little bit of a, so I like to use the Princeton, oh, it's maybe hard to see. I like to use, okay, you might be able not to see, okay. Um, Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. Now on the tips, this is called the ferrule, and you don't want the paint getting in this area. So you want to try to keep your paint like three quarters at most. <laughs> and you want to keep the paint kind of on the bottom section of your brush if you can, because as soon as it gets into the ferrules, it's really hard to clean out of there. And then you end up having a really hard time uh, cleaning them and then you just damage your brush over time. So if you mix the paint beforehand with a proper palette knife, which they're not crazy expensive, I think this one was maybe like eight or nine dollars to get a nice sturdy palette knife and it even has a nice wood handle on it. Nice and ergonomic. And uh, 
yeah, that's that's just a big thing. I remember learning that in school, and I'm just that thing has stuck with me. And my brushes stay a lot cleaner that way. Okay, we're gonna slowly work into these lighter areas. Except we're going to also add this really nice phalo turquoise in. Because I just yes, it'll it'll add a really nice color to it. Kind of almost makes it like a like a green. A bluey green in there. I mean, that's that's what turquoise is. <laughs> there we go. And yeah, that's looking good. I think we can even make this a little bit darker. Probably just add a little too much white to begin with. Yeah, that's a really nice color. Okay, so we'll add that there. I'm going to keep a little bit on my palette knife just so we can actually add more white and make a lighter one as well. Probably just could have set the other one aside a bit, but I think it turned out pretty good. So glad we kind of like fixed the mic issue last time. I realized that uh, I just move around a lot when I'm painting. So I needed a mic that would move with me and I thought about buying maybe one of those like, you know, lapel mics or whatever, or la lav mics, <laughs> a lot of name for them. But then my husband reminded me we have headphones that have mics in them and these are decent headphones. Like they're the, what are they, the Sony, Sony something headphones and they're really great though. And the mic sounds good. I added a little bit of like noise reduction in there. So hopefully you don't hear too much of like the background noises around me with the noise reduction on. But it sounds, I would say, like a hundred times better than it did last week when we were doing the test stream. So I'm so glad we did the test stream. So this first stream wasn't like ruined by bad audio. Okay, let's check the values on that that looks pretty good now we need a really light one and we don't want to have so we want to add a very like white area so it's mostly going to be this white color and then i'm going to add like little bits of silver and stuff in there at the end but i think if we just pick up the little bit that's on the palette here it'll be enough Give us a, that turquoise tint, but I want a nice bright white still. Nice cool white. I feel like I'm shaking my webcam a lot. <laughs> All my mixing. Tried to put the rest of the cams on tripods if I could. go there we go that looks pretty good right um, yeah I think that turned out really nice just gonna get on the edge of my knife a bit I just think it looks so cute with the little piles after I'm done like look how pretty that looks on the side there just so pretty along the side. Okay, now that we have the colors mixed, well, we do have like the shadow color kind of underneath. Sometimes I like to do like a purpley shadow. I might actually make, make it more realistic today. And I have, do, 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 where is it? I have an ivory black as well and it makes kind of like a soft gray color 
Oh, that was a lot of black. I didn't need to put that much black out. I don't use that much black, like I said. But the white table, the reflection is very... See, it kind of makes a nice soft gray color. And I love using this for super realistic shadows. Sometimes I add like, like I said, the purpley shadows in. I don't know, it's just nice to have a purple shadow, but I feel like I want a bit of a gray shadow in this one to add a little something different. Okay. That's a gray one. Gonna add a slightly darker one because the shadow's kind of a little bit darker closer to the bow, and then the further you get away, it gets a little bit lighter. The way that light plays on objects is just like so cool to learn about too. Like if you've ever looked up about like light refraction and the different ways that light kind of plays a role within objects and like paintings and stuff it's just really cool to learn about so if you haven't looked it up look about different lighting sources and how light works within um, the world okay let's see that's a slightly darker one we'll even make a slightly darker one than that too really get all the values in there. <laughs> got... I think that's probably going to be the darkest value, yeah. I'll put that up here and I'll slowly down and then I like to add just like a just white in case I need a little bit more kind of got a blue mixed in there a bit but that's okay it looks pretty good okay there we go got kind of that sorted out now now I these are um, the cloths are just cut up old towels they're super easy it's like a cheap solution yeah I think those are all the colors I was just trying to look at the reference photo again to decide if I wanted to add anything else but I think we're pretty good for now and we could mix a few extra on the go if we want but I guess I will just transition to the main screen now and I will show you this one I think I have to move my camera I'll move it so you guys can see my uh, my Christmas tree my Christmas cat tree have a little tripod behind here there we go. Can you guys see, you guys can see a little bit of the Christmas cat tree anyway. Now, if anyone else has cats, you'll know that cats like to knock stuff off trees and stuff. And that's why we, uh, we've we never had a Christmas tree. Because we always knew we wanted cats, so our, our thing was always going to be a Christmas cat tree. Instead of a cut, what? Uh, ooh, I wonder if we can add a transition. Yeah, I just transitioned. Um, I think you can add like different transitions in between each of them. Um, I use the transition thing. It should transition like slowly. But I have to set that up maybe in Streamlabs a little bit more. But I think 
it's pretty pretty good here right and I zoomed in on the palette a bit so hopefully it's a little easier to see on phone because I know you some of you guys are watching from your phones now I did a little sketch already here um, so with the challenge I'm going to post the reference photo the day before so that's what I did yesterday as I posted the reference photo so for next time if you want to join in then you can just sketch it beforehand like I did and yeah there's lots of different methods to sketch too I've showed a few on my Instagram of the different ways that I like to sketch like some people use a grid um, you can also just like use your phone or like a tablet or like your computer screen and like put your image right up there and get kind of like the base outline and then you can trace in like the little shadows and stuff if you want or you can just freehand it it's up to you how you want to go about um, getting the reference photo down but it's just a guideline because we're going to do most of the most of what we're doing is just painting and adding in the different values so that's what we're kind of working on with these classes I'm not really gonna do like a sketching class <laughs> I've done a lot of sketching in my days I, I used to sketch a lot and uh, yeah it's not like my favorite part of painting to be honest so I try to get past the sketching as quick as I can and move on to actually the painting process and that's like the nice thing is you get to decide as an artist what parts you like and don't like and what tools you'll use to make certain parts faster because sometimes you don't want to sit around and sketch for two hours <laughs> oh tracing paper is another good I haven't used tracing paper for a long time so you could get like some of that tracing paper as well and like print out your image or sketch it on something first and then transfer it to the paper there's lots of different ways to get kind of a base sketch done now what I'm doing is I'm just using this is just like a little gummy eraser and I find it helps take off the the graphite but like just a little bit because we still want to keep the sketch on there we don't want to fully erase it and then you don't end up with like all the little little eraser bits all over the place that's why I use the gummy eraser and it's just fun to play with too like look how stretchy it is <laughs> okay I think we've got that I'm gonna quickly set up I guess my time lapse I've got a time I guess you can't see the time lapse camera it's not really in in frame but I've set up the time lapse on the side here because I wanted to still film the time lapses for you guys and then I'm also trying to make like you know content on all my different platforms so I've got my my phone set up as well as like a little cam okay I like to personally start out with these number four ones yeah the amount of questioning I get about that eraser this this eraser it, it, it's so fun to play with and I think that's why because people are like like most people that have never done art or taken art classes before just aren't familiar with it's normally used in like a lot of sketching and like I said I used to do a lot of sketching growing up so you can kind of like you can mold it into different shapes and like press it on the different areas to like bring out the highlights again and that's the main reason a lot of um, sketchers use it sketchers <laughs> sketching people okay so we're going to start out with I'm gonna say let's get in like I said the darker values first kind of get this like nice purple color in and we'll slowly work our way out from the dark colors and then it'll be easier for you guys to follow if I just have dark to dark to light that's what I normally do is I work dark to light unless I want to make my reel look really cool and you know I'm like painting like you know painting 
I like to make my reels look cool sometimes. So I, I paint in a different order just to make it like look cool as you're filming. Okay, let's put the first brush stroke down. Um, let's pick this. This seems to be the darkest area is this little section here. And now you don't want to put a lot of paint down, at least for the way that I like to paint. Um, I try to, I try to almost add like a, like a base layer of everything. So I'm just adding in the values right now. I'm trying not to add too much paint for the first layer that I'm adding. And you could also start out like a lot of people find it really difficult to see the colors of the paint uh, you want. Uh, you would paint different if you weren't filming. Um, uh, it's hard to say because sometimes I paint this way and then sometimes I don't. It's it kind of feel it's like it's a mood thing. Sometimes I'm painting dark to light and then sometimes I'm all over the place. It kind of depends on what mood I am in, I guess. Good question though, because as an artist, uh, it's good to determine that for myself and figure out what I actually like to do the most. <laughs> Some vague artist thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have like a specific answer, but you are taught in like art schools to paint from dark to light because like I said when you're slowly mixing these color like if you were to add the white on first it would be so hard to keep that purple and I will show you when I start adding the lights this is going to look really dark to start out and then we're going to add the white in and you're going to just see how quickly you end up with a really light looking bow. And you kind of just learn that also by testing out paints and painting more. And I've been doing these mini paintings now. Like, so I've been oil painting for almost two years now. I was doing other painting before, but specifically oil painting has its own, like, its own little special techniques and stuff that go with it. And it's been really cool to learn how the paint reacts and that's why I kind of stuck with one brand of paint too, because you get used to the way that the paint goes on and how it reacts with, I'm using um, like a canvas paper. That's what this is. I guess I should tell you about the type of supplies I'm using too. But yeah, you just kind of get used to using different products and it's good to kind of stick with one thing for a while so you can really create like methods around painting and doing different things. Oh my gosh. My husband's putting emojis in the chat. I'm sure he'll come down at some point and bug us and like eat some lunch. I actually uh, remembered to eat breakfast this time. So my breakfast wasn't like sitting on the side. Last time my cat was like eating it in the background and I didn't notice right away. <laughs> I guess that's a video by itself. What's a video by itself? Here's what I use. Oh yeah, okay, here's what I use, like the different paint supplies and stuff that I use. Exactly. I use a lot of different things and people are always interested in, you know, kind of what what type of supplies to use to get started. And I like the painting like on the canvas paper because it's really smooth. You don't actually have to prep it. It's all like done for you. Now it is a little bit more expensive than canvas sometimes. Um, just because it's like already prepped for you and it's a special type of paper that probably just costs a lot of money to make. But I like it. It's a it's a paper by Archie's. It's Archie's like oil painting paper. I think some people use it for like acrylic painting too, but it seems like overkill to use it for acrylic just because it's so expensive. 
but it's it's just so smooth it's got a really really nice texture and I've gotten so used to using it I really don't like painting on anything else now I've tried painting on canvas and I've also tried um, doing like the wood panels and stuff and everything that I buy I'm like no I just want to go back to painting on paper <laughs> It's just, I think I just found the, the surface that I like painting on, and that's okay. Maybe, uh, maybe Archie's will uh, sponsor me someday, because <laughs> I love their paper so much. That would be a great sponsorship for the channel. Okay, what are you saying? Type of video. Yeah, there is a lot of different videos I feel like I want to make for this YouTube channel, and I just don't have enough time for it all. I, uh, I have a lot of things that I'm doing right now. I actually started taking some online classes for digital marketing and like e-commerce, so I'm going through a course through a local college here in Canada. So I've just, I've got a lot on my plate. I'm also a mom to a, a seven-year-old, almost eight-year-old kiddo. He is a handful. <laughs> Any other parents are out there, you'll know. You'll know what I mean. Okay. Trying to pick out where all the dark parts are. Okay, we're going to do the edges too. Now feel free to also paint a background if you want to. You could do like a colorful background. I was trying to keep these simple because it seemed like most of my followers wanted very simple references to start without any sort of background. They just wanted like white to start. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do some really simple ones. Maybe in the new year, once we've done this a little bit, we'll uh, we'll pick some harder references and I can explain some more like complex painting topics I guess I don't know I feel like it doesn't get too crazy it's it seems kind of the same everything that I paint for the most part there's slightly different like rules when it comes to different compositions and stuff when it comes to painting but for the most part like you can paint anything when you understand the basic concepts of painting once you understand the color mixing I think is a big struggle for a lot of people and that's why I really wanted to add the color mixing into these because if you have any questions please let me know in the comments so that I can help you out with color mixing because I know that that's a that's a big hurdle for a lot of people when they start out and I mean Honestly, with oil paints nowadays, too, you can buy a lot of pre-mixed colors. So if you feel like you need to start out that way, like nothing wrong with just buying a lot of pre-mixed colors. Like Gamblin has a lot of colors and there's a few other lines of paint that are like great quality. Um, you want to get kind of like the professional or artist quality. And I'll have to make a video about this at some point, but a lot of people invest in like really cheap oil paints and you just really can tell the difference. I've used cheaper oil paints before and it's just a big waste of money honestly because they just they don't have as much pigment as some of these other brands do. So it's worth it to invest in a good quality oil paint if you can. And if you're not into oil paints then uh, you can just buy some good quality acrylic paints because they're Definitely is some better quality acrylic paints out there as well. What acrylic brands do normally people buy? They buy like either the Liquidex ones or the Golden ones, I think, are the, the two really popular ones for acrylic paint. I don't do a ton of acrylic paint. It's been actually years since I've done acrylic painting. The reason I wanted to try oil painting was because it doesn't dry as fast. So you have more time to like work with the oils. 
and mix them on the canvas and they just they blend a lot nicer and I find that they're like creamier and like easier to spread whereas like acrylics like I said you kind of how you describe it you just they just they dry so quickly that you really have to add like a bunch of layers so I guess it's just like a different method of painting right you're having to add more layers and I feel like acrylic paintings tend to take me longer just because you can't just do it in one go I like to do the like a la prema approach where you're just all in one go because I have a very short attention span um yeah definitely uh definitely don't have ADHD or anything <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, my short attention span is definitely from my ADHD and I tend to move from project to project pretty quickly. And that's actually why I started these tiny little paintings because I figured I need something that I can do and be done with and it's not going to take me forever. And it's kind of served me well, honestly. I'm glad that I decided to do that. Okay, what are you saying? Hmm, there's another topic for a video, underpaintings. Yeah, so underpaintings are a big thing. I don't personally underpaint. Um, it's very helpful though for people that are just starting out. Um, so an underpainting is just a layer of paint, like you're laying down like a base layer of just like one color or multiple colors. So then you can kind of, you're not like working on like a really white background because when you're working on white, sometimes your darkest colors just look so dark and then you tend to like lighten them up more and then you end up with like kind of a washed out painting because you're not actually going in with the darkest. And like I said, you'll kind of learn that over time as you're painting. But as a beginner, if you just use a color to begin with. You can even buy, I think some of these like different oil painting papers have colors as well. So you can buy one that's kind of got like a tinted paper and that'll help you to like establish the values a lot better. Um, and then also a lot of people have a hard time with um, the saturation. Like if you mix too many pigments together like see how I didn't mix too many pigments together I tried to keep a very solid color if you mix too many together it gets kind of like muddy and the underpainting kind of helps you figure out when you're maybe like putting something on that's like really really muddy and gross looking <laughs> just easier to see the colors honestly when you've been doing it for a long time then you can kind of shift towards just using white and I think I just also like a challenge too so just me being difficult you know and I also like the feel of oils better than a lot of people do like their underpaintings in acrylic you can do it in oils but then I would have to do it like you know three or four days before so it had time to kind of like dry or at least touch dry for the first layer and I don't got time for that so <laughs> but that's a that's a good video idea you're right hun under paintings okay oh my god I think we're like we're in pretty close to like finishing this first color we can always come back in again oh I should show you guys I have to do I it's just a little jar with some linseed oil in it and I like to use the linseed oil to clean my brush so I'm gonna put it kind of on the side here and I just dip my brush in a little bit and then I dip it on my rag and that kind of cleans off a lot of the pigment. So we can keep using the same brush. I guess I have more brushes that I could use, but 
the less brushes I have to clean at the end, the better, because I don't always like cleaning brushes, but I know I have to do it after painting or else that damages your brushes if you don't clean them all the way. So see, you just kind of dip it in. A lot of people like to clean in between with like the solvents and stuff, like what is it, like mineral spirits, but those are really bad for you. So I would advise not to. I do not recommend using solvents in your oil painting. That's where a lot of health issues and stuff come in. And a lot of the old masters went crazy from using some of those different fumy solvents. So if you can avoid it, why not, right? Try to kind of, I, I know this perspective for a lot of Oil painters is maybe a little controversial, but I don't agree with using a ton of toxic solvents in my paint. And that's exactly why I use gambling, because they don't use any solvents within their actual like base oil paints. They're just mixed with linseed oil and that's it. Just pigment and linseed oil. Okay, now we can use the next color here. I'm gonna go in with this, oh, this is such a nice blue. Nice deep color, remembering to keep it on the edge of our brush. There. Okay, and we're going to start by getting this section in. Look at that blue. That's such a pretty blue. I love that. And we'll add some on this area too. Like I said, don't be afraid that it's looking really dark to start out with because it will lighten up when we add the whites. Gonna add the edges here. Like these bows or like fabric y type things are just so fun to paint. I feel like shiny things or like the folds in fabric are really just a fun like challenge to paint. That's why I pick this. And I definitely think we'll do like a Christmas ornament at some point. I did a red one last year that was really cute. Um, I think I posted it on my Instagram recently. And they just. They just have so many like bright, fun things. I, I'm finding most of my reference photos on Canva or Pixels, Pexels maybe, that website. They're like free reference photos. I actually pay for Canva, so I've got like some of the pro photos too. Um, but when I'm using the pro photos, like I don't think you're supposed to like use them as a reference photo unless you change it up a little bit. That's why like I changed the color and like the orientation of the photo a bit. I feel like it's nice to kind of add your own spin to it. So like this bow I think was like more of like a turquoise color before, or like a, it was almost minty to be honest. And I really hate the color mint. I don't know, I'm not gonna get into that, but I don't like the color mint a lot. And uh, 
it's one of those colors that you will not see in my painting. So I'm like, I definitely need to change that. <laughs> and yeah, I'm always trying to change the reference photo. So if you find a free reference photo, try to like put it in like Canva or like Photoshop and like fool around with it a bit and like add some of your own twists to it or like change the background up and like make it your own if you're going to. Yeah, so I edited this one in Photoshop. Um, I actually just uh, got Photoshop again this year. Um, I used to use it in high school a lot for editing different things. I took some cool tech courses in high school about editing in Photoshop and, you know, movie maker type things with like After Effects and uh, all of the Adobe products we had at our school. But yeah, I like to edit my photos just because if I'm going to use like a free photo online or something like the pro photos on Canva, it just, it feels weird just like ripping off a photographer, you know, like it's their photo that they took and, you know, like obviously they gave permission because the photo is like free or like you're paying for it on Canva, but like, I don't know, I feel like you just want to add your own twist and sometimes I can't like get reference photos like I just don't have time some to like set up a whole thing and like take reference photos I think it's great to use free photos if you can but if you're gonna sell your work or anything you definitely want to make it more of your own thing so then it's like got your own little twist so you know like the other day I found the photos of like waffles that I really like but I'm like I don't want to just do a waffle I made waffle butterflies <laughs> and so I edited it into like looking like waffle butterflies which was really crazy and now I've been like dreaming about waffle butterflies ever since my husband like jokingly said it the other day but yeah just editing your photos can really add like your own personal touch to your your paintings whether it's just, like I said, like an easy color shift and like changing the orientation of the photo a bit or like editing out a section. Like I think it had kind of like some parts in the thing that were messing me up. So I used some of the like Photoshop AI tools to edit out certain things. And the AI tools are great because you can like add different backgrounds too. And as long as you pay for Photoshop, you're allowed to use them like commercially so you can like sell them as well with their AI function. <laughs> AI, I guess, is another controversial thing, isn't it? <laughs> Some people don't like AI, especially like a lot of artists because they think it's taking their jobs. But I think as an artist, you can really use it as a great tool towards making your life as an artist a lot easier. That's my take on it anyway. I really like the tools just for the ease of use and it saves me a lot of time. I'm still using this blue color here, the second one from the top. Okay, let's see what else we can do. I'm gonna add some more darker areas in this section as well. Got a little hair on it there. Trying not to miss any sections. Um, 
Starting in this section here. Actually add a little bit of more darker area in some of these sections before we start adding in the lighter colors. There's a few that I want to make a little bit darker kind of near the top here. I'm trying to see where else the dark color will be good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, I gotta add, I add a little too much dark on there, so I'm gonna go back to my blue color now, the second one. And my palette hasn't moved or anything. Okay, we're still good, very good. Gonna add in here feel free to also put on your own music I don't have music on right now because I know that YouTube's gonna copyright me if I put any music on I guess I could have put on like a little like epidemic sound or something because I pay into like the epidemic sound subscription for my YouTube videos just to have like better music. So feel free to listen with your own music if you want because I normally like to listen with uh, some of my Spotify playlists when I'm painting. Type down in the comments what type of music you like to listen to while you're painting. I'd love to know what other people enjoy listening to while painting. I think my go-to playlist is like my punk rock playlist from like the early 2000s. <laughs> I uh, spent a lot of my teenage years in the punk rocky type music. Favorite is Paramore though. Love Paramore. Okay, what else we got? Am I missing any? Yes, I am. Am I missing this whole section here? make this a little bit darker, at least around the middle section. This one, make it a little wider, this one. Now I like to go out, especially with these bows, I like to kind of like go out with the edge of my brush like this just to make it like a little bit jagged because in the like reference photo it's like blended together and we can also do that a little bit afterwards too when we add the other colors but you can see in, in there that it Makes it look a little bit more realistic if certain parts are kind of jagged like that. There we go. And then these ones in the middle. 
have to use a slightly smaller stroke this way. And then right here, I'm going to add some of these darker parts in this area too. There we go. We can always touch up the edges at the end too, like around the outside. I like to touch those up at the end. Now we're going to move on to the third color. Move on to the third color. This color is nice and saturated, so pretty. It's okay if you leave a little bit of the oil on too because it'll make it nice and smooth to spread. I left a little extra oil on it just to spread it in these areas here. I'm gonna kind of just add it to this outside layer here and slowly blend it into the darker colors. more of this color. It looks pretty good. You could stop. No, 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 no. Not quite yet. Not, not to my satisfaction yet. But I do think it looks pretty good. It's coming along. I 
I did try to pick some like easier references. It probably won't take us until like one o'clock to paint this though. Looks like art in an old book. Ah, okay. Old timey art. It's very half finished right now. <laughs> But I appreciate the compliment. It's got a different vibe to it. I'm sure there's people out there that do like half finished art. I've definitely seen some of those, like, I actually like some of those paintings where it, like, keeps a little bit of, like, the under sketch. I just think those paintings are so cool because you can kind of see what the artist, like, started with and where they finished. My husband is leaving. Are you coming downstairs to get food? <laughs> I told him to eat before the stream so he wasn't making tons of noise in the kitchen, but uh, I don't think he ate enough, so he will come down at some point and eat. He has to. <laughs> There's that quotation I like. What's the quotation? Oh yes, work is never finished, only abandoned. Yes. You never can really finish things fully because what does fully finished even mean, right? It's kind of uh, subjective, I guess, based on how and what you think finished is. So sometimes, well, I mean, finished is better than spending too much time on the same thing over and over again when you're going to achieve maybe a very similar result. I try not to overwork my paintings. That's one thing with oil paintings, too, is you don't want to overwork them because then... Like I said, especially when you're using very different colors on the color wheel, you're going to end up with very muddy work if you're just blending and blending and blending and you're like adding more colors and just going overboard. Sometimes it's nice to see some brush strokes like it's okay if it's not a photo. We're not trying to obtain a painting that is a photo. There's a lot of painters that are really amazing, hyper-realistic painters, but that is not the type of art that I do. I like to make mine realistic, so it's like realism, but more in the painterly realism side. Definitely enjoy to see some brush strokes in my work. Okay, we're going to start using this next color here. Next one down. I keep looking over in this section because that's where my reference photo is. You also could work off of like life too. A lot of people like to work from life so they set up like a little scene and then paint like that which is fun as well. 
I've done that before. It's nice to try to work from something that potentially is like changing with lighting and stuff around you. Plain air painting is like that. I did a bunch of plain air painting this summer and that was a lot of fun because the scenery changes so quickly and like the shadows and so you have to kind of really lay down your brush strokes um, passionately. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the word is for it, but you definitely have to lay down your brush strokes pretty quickly when it comes to plain air painting. Unless you take kind of like a before photo, like sometimes I would take a photo beforehand because I wouldn't always get it done while I'm out painting. So it's nice to be able to like bring it home and finish it up at home if you want. But just like pure plain air painting where you finish it all in one go on the spot is a uh, it's an experience. I really, I really think every artist should try painting out in nature. I did. We did like a bunch of camping trips and stuff, so that's why I was plein air painting quite a bit. And I like hiking, going to like the beaches and stuff here. So I feel like I'm out in nature anyway. I might as well do a little bit of plein air. I think I like painting small objects more than I like painting um, like scenes but it's nice to switch things up sometimes I feel like you get you get more skills from uh, trying out new things and experimenting and sometimes you find out you just don't like something and that's okay but I think you should give it a try a bunch of times before you decide you don't like it. Okay. Now, as you see, it is getting dark in certain areas. I am trying to keep the highlighted areas pretty white. But it's slowly, slowly getting darker and darker as we get down to these sections. Okay. I'm gonna maybe just like turn this around. My towel is getting gross. And by gross I mean actually really pretty because I love the look of all of the rags after. And make sure if you're using a rag too, you don't throw these out right away. You want to make sure the pigment um, has fully dried. And by dried, I mean the oil has hardened. So the oil has to be exposed to air for quite a while before it hardens. It goes through a process called oxidization. And that process will create like friction as it's drying. And if it's trapped in like a garbage bag it actually could light on fire because it will create so much friction and heat so yeah just don't uh don't light your garbage bags on fire by throwing rags out before they're fully dry a little pro tip from an artist and no, I don't have experience with that, but I don't, that is not something I want to experience because I've heard it from other artists and that is one of the safety things you learn when you're in school. Now, I didn't actually go to art school. I should mention that. I didn't go to art school. I just took a lot of high school art courses and I have taken some like local painting classes and stuff with... Um, just some local artists. So I've learned these tips along the way, whether it's like YouTube videos or like other people's live streams or all these classes I took. I had a really great high school art teacher and she obviously went to art school. So she, she taught me a lot of what I know and taught me to experiment and go out of my comfort zone and stuff. So hats off to her. I don't know if she's still teaching, but she was a great art. I actually had a, a bunch of different art teachers because I went to 
three different high schools growing up. We moved a lot growing up. So it's actually kind of weird. This is like, I think the longest that I've ever lived in one house and it's in my adult years. We never really lived in the same place when I was younger. We just we moved around a lot. My parents got divorced when I was like nine years old and we proceeded to move around quite a bit after that. Would not recommend it. Did not like moving around a lot. I am definitely a homebody. Me and my husband, we bought this house like eight years ago now. And we've just lived here ever since. And I don't want to move if we don't have to. Almost dipped my brush in the wrong color. We're doing this like turquoise color now. And then we'll slowly work into the highlighted sections. I feel like the turquoise just adds like a really nice color shift there in the transition areas just kind of dabbing it a little bit as a transition color. Kind of this will slowly lighten things up because it does have titanium white in it. So you want to be careful as you're applying this, that it doesn't get too much into the darker areas of your painting. Unless you want to lighten it up, then throw it in there a bit. Are you going to keep the really white parts? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, the really light color into some of the white parts. Like I said, I might use silver paint. Honestly, I don't know if I'll use it now because I kind of kind of like the vibe without the silver paint. But I, uh, I it's just so hard because I also like the sparkle. So <laughs> we could. Now I'm blending this um, turquoise color into this dark area a little bit, just because I want to lighten it up. And I'm trying to do my brush strokes so it it kind of makes like a curve a little bit. Like I don't know if you noticed that in some of these areas, but I'm kind of curving it. So then you give a curvature to the painting a bit. But yeah, I don't know. The white parts are going to be covered with paint, so I'm not going to have just the paper. Um, I'm not going to be covering like this section, like the background in any paint. Like I said, you could put a color down or you could just put like white paint down if you don't want to leave the paper. But I kind of like the texture of the paper. There's something so nice about the texture. I'm very much a texture person. Okay, we'll go with this slightly lighter color. And we'll add a little bit of that into these areas now.
do, do, do. Making sure that I'm putting the colors in the area that I want. Okay. Clean that off. It's getting a little too close to the tip. Or to the ferrule of the brush. Just trying to squeeze the pigment out so it doesn't get into there and ruin my brush. Okay. We'll add this kind of lighter color. And we'll also put a bit of the bright white as well, kind of on the main highlights. But we'll start with this. I don't want too much on my brush. Like I said, the white will go a long way. I probably overmixed how much white I have on the palette. I guess it's better to have more of the color than less because we don't want to have to mix in the middle if we can avoid it, right? So I'm covering these white parts up with the transition color with white. Because on the reference photo, you can kind of see that these areas are actually in the shadow part anyway. So there must be another light reflecting somewhere else in the photo. So we don't want to go too crazy with how bright we make these. Um, I am going to add highlights around the edges of here just to kind of define the curve a little bit. And by defining that curve, you'll start to see it like kind of come to life a little bit. Come to life. There. And I will probably add a little bit of the lighter color on the tip here, too. Add some of this white color to the edge of this one, too. I might actually want to go in and grab a, kind of like a fine liner brush too. There are all my fine liner brushes. There's my smallest one. It's a 20 over zero liner brush. And I'm going to go in with this like white, the brightest white. We need a little bit of oil. Just gonna grab a little bit of oil from here. It'll spread a little bit easier if it's got some oil in it. Mix it with the oil. Not too much oil. Went a little overboard there. Okay. This is gonna add kind of the highlights.
And these highlights will slowly start to make the, the framing kind of come together. I use the bigger brush as well to kind of blend these out a bit on the edges. And then when we add highlights around the sides, um, like around these areas here, just bring my liner brush and go along the edge, then it'll really bring out that highlight on the edge. It's very, very faint on the photo, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight it a little bit extra just because I think it looks nice with the extra. Extra bright white. I'm actually going to go in with a slightly darker color too here. Take another brush. Some of it bled into this darker color. Maybe want a very faint line at the top. Sometimes it's easier to take the darker color and rework this area a bit. There we go. Come back in here, rework this area. I'm going to make finish this area off too in the middle. I love adding the highlights because it really does make everything come together when you have the highlights. Yeah, this is where experience comes in and you deviate away from what you see in the reference photo. Yeah, exactly. I kind of, like I said, I kind of, I kind of don't follow the reference photos fully and you just could kind of make it up as you go, especially when you, like you said, have experience with painting a lot you're just like oh I think this might look good or oh, I'm going to change that up a little bit and add a little dash of color here or there and it just kind of makes it your own at that point but when you learn the foundations of painting it makes it a lot easier to do that that's why I'm trying to teach a lot of the foundations in these so then you guys can so leave you away from what I'm teaching. It's like a lot of artists like to break rules. Like I said, like a lot of artists are like, oh, you have to do an underpainting or you have to do this or you have to do that. Or there, there's a lot of things that art teachers will teach you in school and stuff. But as an artist, you can decide to not do that if you want. And there's nothing wrong with that because... No one's really telling you how to do your work when you're out in the world on your own. You can have fun and explore new techniques. I mean, that's how some of the major art styles of history have been made is just with experimenting and going against the grain. So I don't think there's anything wrong with doing things different than the masters because at one point the masters went against the grain and that's how they became masters. I'm going to add a highlight in here. And really this section is just about defining the different shapes now with the highlights and going back in and you're kind of, I have like three brushes in my hand right now. You can see my three brushes in my hand. And I'm just, I keep going back in and readjusting certain sections that I feel like are missing something or that need more color. And...
This is where the magic happens, per se. down here too. Yeah, I gotta remember to uh, try to like record everything at the same time too. I will have a time lapse out. I'm thinking I'll release this time lapse this weekend. So you'll get to see. I'll, I'll also keep the live up for you guys. I'm just gonna try to keep everything as like live VODs so you can come back and do these paintings anytime that you want. It's nice that YouTube does that so you can kind of come back and watch it on your own time because I know not everyone can paint at this time of the day, but it's the only time I have because my kiddo is in school. <laughs> so it makes it easier to paint at this time for me. But if you can join, I would love to have people painting with me. I know this is the first art challenge, so I wasn't sure how many people would be available to come and like hang out with me. But if you are re-watching this and you are painting along to this as like a VOD, then just like say hi in the comments and let me know that you're watching the the recording of this video because it's pretty nice that uh, there's a platform that I can have these videos up and you're able to kind of learn with me. Do you have recordings for shorts? Yes, I'm also recording shorts as well. So I'll, I like to make shorts and reels on my, on all my different platforms. I feel like Shorts and reels have been the thing for creators. You got to get on shorts and reels if you're a creator. Because it's the platforms are really pushing out um, short type content right now. So I've got I've got like a little camera over here. I've got like my time lapse camera and then like obviously the main camera here. And then I'm also filming shorts as well. Um, so I've got like one, two, three, four, five cameras right now just to film this. Got to get all the angles. <laughs> I feel like as, um, as a small business or artist, creator, you just need to do it, it all yourself. So it's good to have like multiple angles to kind of choose clips from and then I'm able to be able to tell people that I even have these streams going on because if I if I don't talk about it on my socials then no one will come and join right I meant for this painting yes yes for this painting but in general I have shorts content for all of it I try to film shorts um, and time-lapse videos for all of my paintings because I've gotten so many questions over the years about my art and how I do it and so like what was it like maybe a year ago I took it like more seriously and I'm like no I'm gonna like post this stuff online so uh, I can like refer people to my social media pages when I get asked questions about my art and now I'm actually making a living out of it, which is really cool to be able to make art for a living. And and by a living, I mean my husband is paying a lot of the bills right now <laughs> with his income. But he's giving me time to grow my platforms and get everything off the ground while I'm, you know, just figuring things out like that's why I'm doing I was saying earlier in the stream that I'm taking some digital marketing and e-commerce um, college courses right now so I'm just just trying to learn everything that I can 
to be able to do this in the long term because I really, really enjoy doing this and I want to make a living out of it so then I can just keep doing it forever and sharing the creativity with you all. Like, I just really enjoy interacting with the art community and making friends and especially like on Instagram, I feel like I've made so many art friends on Instagram and it's so lovely to like connect with other artists and just grow together as a community. So yeah, if you are an artist and need some art friends, come over to my Instagram and we can all follow each other there and hang out and learn from each other, grow together. How's that looking, hun? Feel like it's slowly coming together over there. How is the video? You were saying like the stream was only in, what was it, like 720? Or was it less quality last time? Remember you saying that YouTube only lets you stream at a certain, certain quality level. So I'm wondering if it's like, looks okay. It looks okay? Okay, looks okay. That's all that matters, that it looks decent. Seven twenty is the max I see. Yeah, okay. Cause right now I have like some of them are like four K cameras. I think most of them are ten eighty P though, so not too much lower quality. Uh, mine is on auto and going to four eighty P. Yeah, they probably just don't want people streaming it all at like a super high quality. Um it probably would get laggy if there's too many people connected at a really high quality. So I understand why they do it. It makes sense, I guess. I wish I could do everything in 4K, though. <laughs> yeah, probably just your... Um, probably our internet. We're on the same internet right now below so our internet doesn't struggle yeah and I wasn't sure about that like we have pretty good internet here but I did downgrade our internet because they really charge in like a crazy amount for our internet like Canada they oh man they rob you <laughs> so expensive here for internet we're paying for like we're paying what is it like how much are we paying hun it's like a hundred well i think we ended up going down to like 90 something dollars and that's canadian but i think it's around a hundred dollars normally for the internet it's just expensive <laughs> But we need the internet nowadays. I feel like you can't like not have the internet, you know what I mean? That's what where everyone does everything now. Do, do, do.
And then maybe add some more highlights in this section too. This is kind of like the brightest part of the painting. Like I said, as you add the whites, or the lighter colors, you end up lightening everything. So like the, it's really getting light, isn't it? I told you it would get light. Slowly getting there. Kind of want to add a bit more of this color in there. It's like turquoise color in there. Try to add some more highlights in these sections. Just a little highlight around the edges to really make it stand out a bit. And then this part also has kind of like some shiny sections on the inside. I'm going to try to add that here. Go back in here with some darker parts too, just to make sure that we still have some dark sections. And then at the end, we'll also add like a little shadow. So it like feels like it's popping out of the paper a little bit. You don't have to add the shadow if you don't want to. Um, but I'll show you guys how to do or how I like to do the shadow for that last section. was the dishwasher. Don't mind that. I kind of opened it a bit to stop it earlier, but it decided to fully open on me. <laughs> I'll have to finish running that later still. I'm going to try not to forget to run it all the way. I'm sure it was like pretty much done though. Like I tried to run it like, it was like two and a half hours ago I started running it. I thought it would be done, but I guess the dishwasher runs more than two and a half hours. Never actually timed the dishwasher before. But apparently I gotta start it more than two and a half hours beforehand if I am gonna run it. And we've got a section here. I'm going to add some lighter sections in because there's definitely like a reflection or maybe somewhere else in the room where this photo was taken. I definitely have to add in a bit of highlights. 
kind of like these back sections even though they're in the shadow sometimes you get kind of like little reflections blend it in a bit so it's not like super bright but it's the nice thing with oil paints is you can kind of just blend it in we can brighten up these sections here we want to add like really bright highlights this is kind of like the section where we want to add more bright highlights to really make those areas pop out a little bit more. They're not like super bright in the reference photo, but this is where I'm kind of taking my creativity, my own path, making it look more like something I would paint. You can kind of add your own flair at this point and kind of add little little bits of other colors if you want. Like I said, I might go in with the silver too, just to add a little shimmer, but it kind of almost looks shimmery as it is. And we didn't even need to add it. up this part too. And that will make it look so much better. What are you saying? LOL, was that a cat messing with the dishwasher? No, it was not a cat. It was just, or maybe it was the cat. I actually didn't check. It could have been one of the cats messing with the dishwasher. Because our one cat, she likes to sit near the dishwasher when it's going because it's like nice and warm near the vent. So maybe she like pushed it all the way open. I don't know where they are right now. Well, I think... Kit Kat's laying there. It could have been Mona. I didn't see her though. Could have also just fallen open. Like I said, I left it like a crack open just to stop the washer for now. But now it's fully open. <laughs> Slowly adding more. A little bit here. Get a bit more bright highlight right here.
a bit of a highlight on this section too. Kind of trying to drag the highlight out to the point a bit so get thicker lines near the bottom section and then slowly working our way up to the edge. so it gives it more of that shape. Got to add a bit more highlight on the edge here. Sometimes you gotta step back too and see where you're kind of missing some of the highlights. just a little bit of highlights in this section too. Very faint, so I'm going to kind of blend them in. They curve around a bit just to add, just to add that in there. Actually highlight this area a bit more. like it needs thicker ones near the bottom here. at the reference photo it's a good thing to like step back a lot actually they they do that in school a lot is I should mention that that they make you step back because if you're like constantly just up like this and you don't take a look back then a lot of the times you'll miss something what's left to do well I've got to touch up the edges a bit like along the edges here, you can see the edges are a little rough looking. Um, so I like to either do that with a fine liner or I take one of my straight edge brushes just to touch up the edge. And then I also want to add a little bit of a shadow down here just to make it look a little bit more realistic. But other than that, like, you could stop here if you wanted. Nothing saying you can't stop here. Because it will look really nice even just like that. But I'm going to add a little bit more of the darker colors just to kind of darken these shadows a bit more with this uh, darker purple color. And if I darken up the shadows a bit, it'll make the highlights stand out more too. And then like I said, I'm going to like touch up the edges a bit.
I make sure I'm not mumbling so you can hear me. I'm just bringing this color into this section a little bit more. And like I said, you could stop here if you wanted to. But I'm trying to add in a little bit more detail around the edges and just like crispy up the lines I guess my one issue is uh, working around all these cameras <laughs> I've kind of learned to work with it though it gets easier over time but uh, I'm definitely constantly like <laughs> looking around the cameras right <laughs> Trying to get my painting in. I probably could paint a lot faster if I didn't have all these cameras. Some people have said that I'm really slow at painting. But I think I would be a lot faster if I wasn't like filming stuff for content all the time. But I think the content part is honestly like one of my favorite parts to do is like just being able to share online with the community and like interact with people. So I wouldn't want to like paint any faster if that makes sense. Just just so I could do it faster, like because then I wouldn't get to do all the filming part and like the editing and stuff that I enjoy doing. I feel like editing and making content is like an art form in itself, right? Shaking the camera. I try not to touch the cameras. <laughs> and you could always touch up the painting a little bit more too when it's dry. Sometimes it's Nice to touch up the edges, like when it's dry, like if you're having a hard time with the colors, like moving too much and like you're kind of like messing up the middle section, so you could go in with like a fine liner afterwards. Okay, I don't really want to clean those other brushes right now, so I'm going to grab, who do I want to use? I will use another flat brush. Maybe I'll use the number four though. I think I have another one. I do, there it is. Okay. I have another, they're called Chasel Blenders. Chasel Blenders. That was my hour left time reminder. And we will go in with these colors now to add the shadow. Cause I like I, I think that looks pretty good. I guess I maybe at the end we'll add some touches of silver, but I have to get my husband down here if I'm gonna add silver. Cause that lid is not coming off with my strength. <laughs> I'm pretty strong, like I work out at the gym, but like that lid is on really tight. I might even need the tool and to try to like twist it off. It might be a uh, add silver later thing. Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding just a little bit of this color to the edges. Now you want to add the darkest color, obviously closest to the to the bow because that's where your darkest shadows are gonna be. And then they slowly fade out from there. 
and this is meant to be a blender brush so perfect use case scenario for it right because we're going to be blending it out slowly so darkest parts here and then we'll blend out from that little shadow there because it kind of goes it goes down into this area off the page a little bit the shadow i'm gonna move this section up here um oh i have an arrow i haven't been using the arrow my husband keeps telling me to use the arrow we're, we're working on this section now <laughs> i totally didn't use the arrow like the whole time sorry hun I gotta like have a reminder or something to like remember to use the arrow. I'm not used to it yet. But like it's such a good idea. At least for like complex photos, it might be nice to like know exactly which area I'm working on, right? But like somewhere near the end of the photo, like painting anyway, like I'm kind of just going all over the place, so. Ah. Uh... LOL, it hasn't moved in ages. Yeah, it's just been, just been sitting there. Sorry. <laughs> just, just been sitting there. It's fine. I'm glad I zoomed in on my palette this time because now we have like a smaller area. Hopefully it's like easier to see my palette this time too. Okay, we'll go in with this next color. And... We're gonna, gonna go under just under that color with a little bit of this darker color. And then we're gonna really lighten it all up with the white color that we need as well. Kind of blending these two together on the edge of the colors so they blend in. And then we're gonna do the same with the lighter colors. So we're just blending as we go down in colors. And we'll take some of the pigment off again, just so we don't have this bleeding into it too much. And we're going to take this lighter color. I think I still had a bit too much linseed oil on my brush there from cleaning. There we go. And then we will go in and slowly add this lighter color. And then we'll go and grab like the white that I added as well and add kind of the white all the way down so it like kind of blends in with the paper a bit because I feel like the titanium white is very close to the color of the paper, at least my paper anyway, so. I can kind of blend it pretty good. Add that in. Look at that, it's starting to look like a shadow, right? And then and then all I'm going to do now is clean this off quite a lot. Actually, you know what we're going to do? I just bought this new one. They're like called little mop brushes. This is a 1 over 8 mop brush. Mini mop because they're very tiny. But it's got like, 
Here, I'll put it on the bigger one so you can see it, but it's got a really fluffy, and you can take a little bit of the white. I'm going to grab a fresh white because it's kind of got a bunch of blue mixed in. I'm going to take some white in there. I'm just going to put like a very small amount in that area. And we're going to use this to kind of blend it in. We want a small amount of it just to blend it. I'm going to go and blend the edges. I'm glad I bought this little brush. Quite handy for blending out things like this. Though you can just use the brush I was just using too, like a straight edge brush, but this one it gives really nice transitions. Look at that. Getting really nice transition there when we blend it out. Shaking the easel a lot. Try not to shake it too much. Lightening up this section a bit. We might need to use a smaller brush on the sides here. Just actually grab my number six brush and the flat edge and really go in there on the sides. gonna go on the side here again we're just blending it out really slowly it's okay if a little bit of the blue makes it in too because it's shiny and it will like in real life the reflection of the blue might be in there a bit Keep cleaning my brush off as I go so then don't get mix of a bunch of other colors as we're dipping it. Let's step back. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now. Get that bottom section too. On the other side, I need to get like a mini mini mop brush, eh? <laughs> so I have something even smaller than the little mop brush. I'm gonna clean that pigment off. Grab some more white. Go back in again. I 
bring the shadow up a bit. And I can even take this mop brush and clean it off a bit and I should be able to like add maybe a bit of white here. Just on the edge with the mop brush. But see it's like too big to like really get in there too close to it. So well, I got some hairs on there. Make sure you take off the hairs as you go so you don't have it kind of drying with it. this one out a little bit more. I think I got a bit of blue on my brush. So you just want to keep, I was going to say rinsing it, but <laughs> dabbing it. Dabbing the pigment off and then coming back to it to really get that nice smooth transition. And that's like looking pretty good now. That looks good. I'm gonna come back in here with this little mop brush. I'm just lightening these shadows a little bit because I really don't want the shadows super prominent because it's a reference photo, has them very light. This is probably the darkest shadow area is in this section here. It's like the darkest part. It's not getting a lot of light. Like that section. Got a little hair there. There we go. Try to dab this off so I can add some more white into the sides. Got a bit more white. Very subtle shadow, but that's how I do my little shadows, the tools that I use. Very simple tools, but yeah, definitely invest in like one of these mop brushes because they're so handy. I don't know why I didn't have it sooner. <laughs> like look how gradual that kind of goes down. There we go. Honestly, like I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. There's like maybe a few darker sections I might want to still darken up, but for the most part, like we're pretty, pretty good with this, right? Make this area like a little bit darker. And you can kind of just like, like I said, just add in things as you like you need to. And this is just how I paint. It's a uh, can add in as much extra detail as you want and then just just stop at some point. Call it quits and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, really coming together now, especially with the shadow. 
I feel like every time I add the shadow in, it's like, ugh. I never used to like adding the shadow in, but now I add the shadow in more and I'm just so happy. <laughs> These emojis are great. I get, I don't think, oh, maybe I can use emojis on my end too. Oh my gosh, yeah, there is some cool emojis. What? YouTube emojis. There we go. I can look at these funny ones. Oh, there's a little poop one, of course. A little pink poop guy. <laughs> He's funny. And I'm going to add some darker sections here. Okay, I think we're going to like just kind of wrap it up at this point because it's looking really good so far. Sometimes if I touch it too much, it'll make it look worse. So <laughs> stop before that happens, right? <laughs> As I go in to add more. It's hard to stop yourself sometimes, though. You get like so into it and you're like, oh, I could just add this and oh, I could just add that. It's just so nice to like keep adding stuff. Do, do, do. I actually might want to lighten that up a little bit. I noticed in the reference photo that this part's kind of a little lighter. There we go. Okay. I guess I should take a final shot of me. I always like to take a final shot of me painting. There we go. For the shorts video, because I'm also filming a time lapse and like shorts video. Guess how many. <laughs> pictures are in this time lapse. So we've been filming for the last couple hours now. That took us like a few hours to like mix the paint and to paint this, but pretty good. I think we're like on time. I didn't want to run these streams more than three hours because most people don't want to like sit down and paint for more than three hours. And I wanted to like at the end of the three hours at most, you would have like a finished painting that, you know, that's why we're doing the mini ones. But, oh, you know what I can do? So I guess this is like the end of the stream then. And I have like, I have a little thank you for being here card. But if you did join in either today on the live stream or if you're watching it afterwards, then comment below and make sure you tag me on social media. We've got like all of the either Instagram or Facebook is where you can tag me because I know like YouTube doesn't really have anywhere you can tag. But just tag me and use the hashtag mini paint challenge. And yeah, then I can like show your paintings some love because I'd love to see all of the different ones. And then I can like share them to my stories and stuff and show other artists like all of your paintings too because I want to help you all grow as artists together and we can uh, we can create like a little community together. And I, I thought these would be a great way to do that. So I have um, right here, this is my... Uh, Facebook uh, or my my Instagram on the one side and then if you wanted to watch more YouTube videos on my YouTube channel you can kind of see them all going there but I've been posting time lapses for the last couple years now and been slowly learning how to film them and get better so like go go over there and check them out and see what you guys think and I will definitely edit this one 
and I will post the time lapse later in the week. I post every Saturday. And then these streams, I'm going to be doing them every Wednesday at 10 a.m. PST. So you can catch me live then. But I think I've done all of the housekeeping I need to do. Make sure that you're subscribed so you get notified when I go live next. But we will see you guys in the next stream. So I hope you all have a lovely day or night where you are. Uh, so take care. Bye, everyone.